military heroines tend not to be the traditional ones. I never went for the noble, beautiful, relentlessly marriageable ones whose demure outlook for me often washed away their personalities. We're all aware that before a bit of a feminist shake-up, women in novels tended to be decorative future wives, although if they were written by women, their characters were slightly more coloured in than the usual park bench with a dress on. For this reason, I have eschewed, love that word, the Bennett sisters, Catherine Earnshaw and Becky Sharp. My top five are, for grumpiness, Betsy Trotwood in David Copperfield. Old, bad-tempered and kind. I like to think I'm all these things, except the last one. Outwardly, Betsy seemed like a big grump, yet her empathy towards David Copperfield outshines the apathy and outright sadism of many other characters in the book. If I'd lived in that era, I would have been like her, a resentful, threatening maiden aunt with not a sniff of a wedding in sight. For cleverness, Jo March in Little Women. A seemingly anachronistic heroine, educated, forward-thinking and not obsessed with marriage. Tell another story, mother, one with a moral to it, like this. I like to think about them afterward, if they are real and not too preachy, said Jo, after a minute's silence. My mum named me after this Jo, although I hope she wasn't disappointed I never had all my hair cut off to pay for a new fridge. For taking on unfair systems, Scout into Killer Mockingbird. Scout was your archetypal tomboy, although it's hard not to see that word fading into the past as the ever more subtle definitions of gender become common parlance. As the only girl in my family, I chose a tomboy's life and fished, climbed trees and didn't wear pink. The fact that Scout didn't really want to be a lady either chimed with me. And then she's at the centre of one of the most powerful books of its era and her reaction and attitude towards the appalling racism prevalent in America at that time forever seals her into my mind. For the best arguments, Portia in The Merchant of Venice. Of course, the only Shakespeare plays us plebs really know are the ones we did at school. It took me a while to crack on to just how much racism there is in The Merchant of Venice, but Portia's magnificent quality of mercy speech shines out of the darkness, thanks to the brilliant Geraldine James, who made me see it in a completely different light in the 1980s. She puts a very persuasive case for choosing mercy over revenge but unfortunately, she's the only woman in the courtroom. For coming back from the brink, Ruth Bryce in The Springtime of the Year. In The Springtime of the Year by Susan Hill is a beautiful book about how we deal with loss. They used to say that all the birds stopped singing for those three hours, that everything went quiet except for the wind. The story of Ruth is eloquent and spare and reads like a long prose poem. This is the most moving evocation of grief and the dawning of new hope that I've ever read.